So this is the biggest chapter of your class 12. Fine. A lot of concepts are there in this chapter, but good thing is that it's a simpler chapter. Okay, it is a simple chapter. The weightage of this chapter is high. Okay. Even the density was also very simple. Okay. But then uh, somehow we feel that okay, uh, that you when you see a calculation, you feel that okay, fine, I will not do that. There's something which is very boring or stuff like that. And some tricky question when you see, you feel like okay, fine, it's very tricky, very hard, I will not do that as well. But so nothing is left there. In physics, just two types of chapters are there. One extremely tricky like mechanics and one routine ones like current electricity, going charge, magnetism, modern physics. Okay? The good part about physics, good thing about physics is that 70 to 80 percent is these routine ones, which you can easily score well if you control your emotions as in you don't feel that it is something which I mean, before even starting, you start feeling that this is something boring and, you know, I go home and watch Avengers and Game and that, that, that goes into your mind that uh, is true, the so, you know, the right. okay? So, I think uh, you should understand that this time of your uh, life will never come. In fact, every second you spend that is gone. But then, the importance of this time which is like next 6-7 months it could just change your life positively or negatively you will not be seeing each other for the rest of your life after class 12 ok you may think that no take my phone number, my whatsapp, my facebook we will be in touch let's sit, let's uh, say whatever crap you say but then the truth of the matter is that slowly and slowly you tend to do I mean you might have some childhood friend when you were very very small, once out of sight, out of mind, gone. Okay, so all of you will not be able to see each other. If you are very lucky, you might be in the same city, but then you will never meet again. Okay, right? you will meet initially. Let's be in touch. But as soon as you find a better friend or uh, you know a good friend circle, we can meet tomorrow, day after, and gone. Alright, then you lose touch and one fine day after five years you are one of like oh, during our time there was no Facebook or whatever. So we used to take landline numbers, okay. We have taken landline numbers of each other and some kids don't even have landline phone during that time. So we lost touch like for uh, let's say 10, 12 years we lost touch and suddenly Facebook we found the, the all the friends and then we started talking. Then we realized that now we, we, we don't like to talk to those friends <laughs> because you moved on. Okay, so if you, I mean, these are not your peers. My point is that you are going to be in a different part of part of the world, if not going to different part of the city, if not uh, that you will be at least in a different part of the city itself and you will never meet each other again. That's the reality. Okay? So, why I am telling you all this? Because at times you think, you, you, you know, you, you think that you are very in a comfortable position where, you know, uh, from 6th class, so first you have this, second, third, fourth, you keep on going to the next class, uh, whatever, like, like this school, less months. He is, he is nerd and she is nerd and she, they are getting good marks but what that? They are not enjoying the movie so I go and watch movie. Anyway, we are going to the next class together, next session together but that is not going to happen after class 12. After class 12, depending on your performance and whatever hard work you have done, you will be at a different, different place. Okay. I am not saying that someone who will be at, uh, you know, lesser known college will not do well in life. I am not saying that. Okay. But what I am saying is that you like to be have a better, you like to be in a better place. At least for four years you will be spending your life in that same place where you are doing your bachelors. Yes or no? So the chances are high 
for the success or whatever you may want to do if you are in a better place okay I have, uh, so work hard and uh, no, fall in love with the marks not with the subject or something that you start feeling that yeah, that's the hard reality you you cannot ignore subject like chemistry you think that okay fine this is very boring every time I say I fell asleep you know I should find something interesting then of course you will end up watching movies only because that, that you think is the most interesting ones okay so when when you just count your marks in the exam what do you do what, what, what is the first strategy be good at the chapters which are easier to master isn't it very obvious you have to be good at those chapters which are easy to master it's very simple okay so uh, don't break your head on uh, some topics which you are not very comfortable with because when you do that you are not able to do well in those chapters which you could do well okay 70 percent of the physics is much simpler than mechanics okay They're much simpler than physics, uh, mechanics so make sure you practice these chapters where electricity is there moving charge mechanism is there, modern physics, thermodynamics, optics, so many topics are there. But what happens is that people they just keep on spending a lot of time in chapters like laws of motion, rigid body motion, oh I did not do it properly, so let me do it again and again and again. But let me tell you if you spend your entire lifetime also you will not be able to master a chapter like laws of motion. Okay? But don't try to spend lots and lots of time in those kind of I have told this several times I am telling it again because this is very very important okay and uh, chemistry is the subject where you could really change the game okay. so high time you wake up okay and uh, then only you I have seen every year students passing though those students who take light year they find it bit of some nonsense and shit so they talk they, they, they take things lightly and then later on, once they have nothing, they come to us like, okay, fine, sir, we have got uh, zero in J mains and CT we got five out of 360. Where all I can go? Like, what? I can't help you after that. Fine. It is you who have done that to yourself. Okay? So be extremely serious. It's about you. It's not about me. So uh, I can, you know, easily ignore it. Also, I can be like, okay, fine. Let's crack jokes after jokes. We will just done with the chapter somehow. You go home happily, enjoy life there. Also, watch movies. Do time pass. Don't do homework. I'll be happy. And that's how time passes. The next batch comes. In. Understand? How it affects me? Nothing. It affects you. Okay, next batch after next batch will come. After few years, I will not teach. Oh, one of my friends will start teaching. But it will not affect me. You will be going to different places. It is your career. Your career is your responsibility. Understand that. Take okay? things in your control. Otherwise, it is already out of control. It is going out of control. Okay, and have these reasonable goals to yourself. Be be nice to yourself, but don't be very very nice to yourself. <laughs> be nice to yourself, as in what I am trying to say is that face a reality. If you are scoring, let us say, 100 out of 360 consistently in, let's say, uh, the monthly test, don't aim in immediately to score, let's say, 350 out of 360 the next test. I right? work hard and score 350 out of 360. That has never happened. And it will never be. Because uh, the improvement is a very, very slow process. You start working hard now, after three, four months, you'll see a small difference. Okay? So at least uh, start working hard now so that if you are scoring, let's say, 100 right now, by the time J mains or whatever exam happens, you are at least up to the level of 150, 160. There are so many decent colleges. You'll be at least some better place. 
But then if you are at 100 level and you are just doing time pass, from 100 you can skip to 80. And every marks is like 2-3 thousand students. Because you are already at that curve where a lot of students are already getting those kind of marks. So if you skip further down, 2-3 thousand students will go ahead of you, will go ahead of you. Then you will realize the importance of one mark. One mark can, you go to counselling of let's say VIT if you write relevance or technology, you go there for counselling, you will see that if you score let's say 250, then you see that 250, 100 people have scored 250. So if you score 249, you miss a seat in let's say computer science, you end up in, a, in some other branch which you may or may not, you may not like. So then you realize what is the importance of just one mark which you could have got by just spending one month of hard work if you have done, you could have got that one extra mark which could have completely changed the way you have approached the engineering and where you will be at the end of your B-Tech or whatever it is. Ready? So if you are getting 100 accepted that yes, this is my current level, accept the reality that this is the 100, I want to make this 100, 150, that should be your target. Forget about what everybody else is doing. Okay? They are not your competitor, they are not too, they will never going to meet them again in your life. Okay, there are 20 lakh kids. 20 lakh kids will be writing exams. Okay? So improve your marks. Don't unnecessarily compete with someone who is making let's say 300 or 350. Okay? Let it be. You will get enough chance later part of your life to compete with them in other manner. Right now, right now they might be ahead. But do your best at least get there where you deserve. Otherwise you will not get there where you de deserve. You will, you will feel sad about it sir. That you could have got 3-4 months extra which is required for me to get a decent seat somewhere. Okay. So, for that matter, physics is simple. If you uh, if you understand the way the chapters are, apart from mechanics, every other chapter, if you pay attention, simple shit, not many varieties of problems are there. Okay? And this is one of those chapters, moving charges and magnetism. Okay, big chapter, good. Good that it is big, because weightage will be high. And it is simple. Okay? So, this is the first time we are learning about magnetism. Alright? So before this chapter, we were learning about uh, the, the property of charge in terms of its electric field and electric potential. Yes or no? Right? First time we are going to learn about another property of charge which is magnetism. Understood? Okay? So, you might have experienced magnetism already. <laughs> Where have, you, have you ever played with the magnets? Yes. yes. Actual magnet, not on a smartphone. Okay. So you might have seen that there are some material which has magnetic property. Okay. First time magnets was discovered, it was discovered in a place called Magnesia. Okay. There people were used to wear. Uh, the shoes with iron soles. So when they used to walk, they have to make more effort. Then they realize that okay, fine, the, the, the floor has some magnetic property in it. The shoes used to be stuck there. So they understood that there is this load stone uh, which has magnetic property. So during those times, nobody knew that there is this something called magnet and it is because of, I mean, they, they don't know the reason because of which magnetism existed during that point in time. So they started feeling that they started, uh, you know, thinking that it has some magical property. Okay, and it has some, uh, it, it, you know, there, there is some god inside uh, every magnet. So they started worshiping it. Okay, and uh, the la ladies, no offense to them, they started wearing it like a jewelry. They, they, they thought that it has some special property. They started wearing it like a jewelry, and then. They like find this rock is special and things like that. But then later, later on, uh, uh, you know, it came to uh, everybody understood that there is something very common. 
Okay, so all the jewelry will thrown away, and, and there is no nothing special about the, this thing. And this is how the discovery of the permanent magnet happens. But nobody knew during that point in time how to use it. Okay, later on, uh, you know, one Chinese emperor during his uh, time they realized that if they if they hang a magnet like this in the air as a thread, it always orient itself in a particular direction. Okay? And that direction is fixed. That's a very, very important property because if I know that, wherever uh, however I keep this magnet, it always points towards the north direction. That's a very important property because right now you might be knowing where is north, south, east and west. But suppose you are in a cloudy atmosphere in, in, in a jungle or in a sea, it is very difficult to know which is north, which is south. So you can use the magnet to navigate in a particular direction. You can go in the direction of north or go to the north, whatever it is, properly. Okay? So for several years, they have used magnet as a navigation device. And they still use it, by the way. Okay? So, uh, 